Ethereum is about to die, and here's why. Ethereum has shown its true colors as of late, from high Ethereum gas fees to a project that is now riddled with conspiracy theories. If you've used ETH over the last few weeks, you know it's unsustainable. So we're going to show you some competitors that are even better. Welcome to The Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, use this as fuel for your investing journey. Because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of The Bean Pod is sponsored by KyberSwap. KyberSwap is a DEX and DEX aggregator, which is built to facilitate all your DeFi needs in one single platform. Fast, cheap, and safe. User experience is KyberSwap's sole focus to make everyone's life better in DeFi. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to reveal why Ethereum is about to die. Meme coin season, Pepe, all those shit projects showed the dark side of Ethereum. It sent gas fees through the roof to the point where the average user couldn't even make any swaps. Yeah, I mean, look, I've I've shoveled plenty of money into the garbage dumpster fire over the last few weeks, I'll tell you that much. You know, when you're trading meme coins, you know, you're following, everyone's following these anonymous accounts on Twitter that are pumping 10 meme coins a day. And then you're left holding the bag on these illiquid shitcoin meme coins. And to get out of your trades, oh, all of a sudden the Ethereum gas fees are $300 a trade. Uh-huh. Now, if this doesn't show you, so Ethereum was founded in what, 2017? 2013, 2013. 2013, yeah. It's 10 years old. It has not done <laughs> what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. Ethereum, it's, it's served its purpose. It, it um, onboarded a lot of people to Web3. It's, one, it's the second biggest cryptocurrency after Bitcoin. Everyone knows it. Everyone uses it. It's done its part. But after 10 years, you know, we're not, we're not in a parabolic bull run where everyone is buying crypto. Everyone's trading crypto. Imagine what the gas fees would be if that were the case, plus meme coin season, a thousand bucks a trade. (laughs) We're still in a bear market here, and the the gas fees are $300 a trade. You're literally just draining your wallet using Ethereum. It's a joke. So today we have to reveal why this is happening, some conspiracies about it, and then maybe give you some solutions on what other projects you can use instead of ETH that we think could become much bigger in the future. Yeah, so right now the problem with Ethereum is its scalability. And, you know, they're obviously doing upgrades. They're trying to make it a more of a sustainable ecosystem and network for enterprises to use and all that. So the current network can only process a limited number of uh, transactions per second, uh, as we've seen, and it's causing huge congestion. So if you're not familiar, you have to imagine like a funnel and you have all these people trying to send transactions through it. So because there's so many people trying to do it and the funnel's only so big at the bottom, those who are paying the most amount of gas will be able to get their transactions through, right? right? So these gas fees are now curbing mainstream adoption. And it's really tarnished the Ethereum name, I believe, in my opinion, because, you know, even if your transaction doesn't go through, you can still end up paying a transaction fee. Yep. So the other day I tried to make a transaction and I wanted to do a swap on Ethereum and it cost me 200 bucks, but the f- transaction didn't actually go through. So I lost the Ethereum that I was holding in my wallet. And that's the other shitty thing. You, ha- you have to hold Ethereum in your wallet to make the swap. Because yep. then if you don't have enough in there, you got to transfer some from, from yeah. some other wallet or whatever. It's, so It's brutal. It's a bit of a joke. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I get it. Ethereum was a first has the first mover advantage. It was one of the first cryptos, blockchains to really see, you know, mass adoption, quote unquote. But that was back in the day when there was no other options. You know, like back in, say, 2013, 2017, even 2020, not really many, not many people knew about other blockchains. Not many people were, were using other blockchains. So you didn't really have a choice. If you want to trade crypto, you got to trade Ethereum. But now here we are in 2023. There's so many other blockchains that are just faster, cheaper, more scalable, and just much more of a pleasure to use than Ethereum. So it's really just comes down to laziness of people that they continue to trade on Ethereum you know, obviously, as we get into this potential conspiracy, all of these meme coins are being launched on purpose on Ethereum to drain people's ETH and burn Ethereum. But if you look around and, and you know, towards the end of the episode, we'll, we'll highlight some competitors, some, some L1 blockchains that are much more scalable that we think people should start learning how to use because I think they are the future of crypto. But the first mover advantage for Ethereum is over. Yeah. It's just people are lazy. They don't want to go through three more clicks to set it up in their MetaMask and get another blockchain. But maybe it also has to do with this potential conspiracy theory that is driving meme coin frenzy on Ethereum, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, 
again, to your point, just before we get into the conspiracy is one, people are lazy and it's that extra click that brings people to not use and not because if we talk about products in Arbitrum, people are all oh, how that, how do I use that? Well, yeah. it's super simple. You click on this and you add it. That's it. <laughs> and then you can start making swaps and all that. So easy. Um, the other thing is the other chains are smaller by comparison in nature to the amount of developers that Ethereum has. So it's considered to be more centralized, whereas Ethereum is considered to be more decentralized. Right. However, I beg to differ because you need to have 32 ETH staked to be a validator. Yeah. What a joke. Who the hell has 32 ETH available to them to, to be staking? Yeah, after they switched from <laughs> Ethereum to Ethereum 2.0, it actually became more centralized, right? Yeah, exactly. So yes, it's, it's you know went from proof of work to proof of stake, but now all these Ethereum whales Control it more than ever. I know. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like, is this a giant scam? I think it's a giant scam. <laughs> I think, so, well, we were talking behind the scenes the other day about Pepe and how it went up to a 1.5 billion or something like that market cap. That doesn't just happen organically that quickly. That takes a lot of coordination, a lot of effort from big players, whales, who are manipulating the markets. Again, you can't just have a couple Twitter accounts talk about it and expect the price to go up that much. So in my theory, I think this whole thing was set up um, by either the Ethereum Foundation. I think Arbitrum's involved. I think Vitalik's involved. I know it sounds like really like out there, but why not? Yeah. Or why no. aren't Why aren't they doing it? I, I have I have some data to back it up. Yeah, so let's hear it. Arbitrum DAO just received over three thirty three hundred ETH uh, in revenue from transaction fees from Ethereum. And just recently, Vitalik and the Ethereum Foundation moved 15,000 Ethereum, not $15,000 worth, 15,000 Ethereum, yeah. which is uh, something like 30 million or something, to crack it and sold it. With the Shanghai upgrade, why didn't they just stake it, right? So, because that, that, that allows uh, institutional investors to stake without locking it up. Yep. If they see the long-term... Um, longevity of Ethereum. Why didn't they just take the ETH? Why are they selling it? Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of things that, you know, you like to think you trust everyone in crypto, but you should trust no one in crypto. Going on behind the scenes, if they see this opportunity, you know, meme coin season starts to trend a little bit. And then what better way for them to burn thousands and thousands and thousands of ETH and drive more adoption of ETH than coordinate? You know, it might not be it doesn't have to be Ethereum Foundation or Vitalik. It could just be a bunch of Ethereum whales, right? These guys own millions and millions and millions upon ETH. They're like, all right, we're going to create this coin, get all these anonymous shill accounts to start shilling it. And then when it starts to catch on, we'll all buy $10 million worth and make this thing go parabolic. Then we sell the top. We wait till it gets listed on Binance. We open massive short positions on Binance. We dump Pepe in our MetaMask, which then we profit off of our short positions in Binance. Yeah. And they get it on the way up. And then they sell to all yeah, the bag holders that are shilling. And they profit on the way down from their shorts on Binance. That's the perfect fucking crypto scam. And right that's there. what they're doing. Yeah. And the other thing is too, is it only t costs about five to 10 bucks to create an Ethereum contract, build a website and, you know, start saying, here's the next meme. Here's the next meme. Yep. Because so much FOMO occurred from people missing out on Pepe. So now you had thousands of memes being created all at once, ultimately c continuing to add to the congestion of the network. And then you have everybody trying to sell as well. Yeah. Which is also contributing to the congestion of the network. I mean, at the, at the moment, at time of recording here, ETH is basically unusable. Yeah. You know, like I'm not spending $350 American to swap out a coin. It's just ridiculous unless yeah. you're making big swaps. Yeah. Like it's just, it's unsustainable for their average retail investor, right? The other thing too is the sandwich attacks yeah. that you get. The MEV uh, bots, that that Jared, uh, Jared, Su Jared Subway. Subway yeah. He was making bank off. It was He was making like 150 ETH a day or something like that, sandwiching front running bots on people's transactions. Yeah. And that's just because of how high the gas fees were. So y that's another thing that's eliminated with some of these alternatives we're, that we're about to present. Yeah, so I think it's, there's a lot of things that are potentially shady about Ethereum. There's a lot of evidence to show that it is a failed technology. You know, if you're, so let's put this back, you know, I, we always, I like to make analogies about startups and business, right? If you're a startup and you're a business and you launch something in 2013 and it, this technology is still failing, even though, you know, people are using it, yeah, I get you're making money, but the technology is failing. People are going to wonder what the hell you're doing. And it's, it's because the technology is so old school that even if with this Ethereum 2.0 upgrade that in theory will allow it to reach 100,000 transactions per second, it's nowhere near there at the moment. 
it's it's just still so far behind all these new next gen L1 blockchains, which we'll talk about. And again, when we were talking in private the other day about Ethereum and what it will take for Ethereum to eventually die off, I think what we're going to see, and and I hope what we're going to see, is when mass adoption eventually occurs through blockchain gaming and metaverse and all these kind of consumer facing apps that millions upon millions of people will want to come and play these games on crypto or millions of people will be onboarded into these metaverses on web three and blockchains. It's they simply cannot be built on Ethereum. You can't build a game on Ethereum because it's way too slow and expensive and clunky. You, know, you can't be processing millions of transactions in like a world of Warcraft type game on Ethereum. You can't build a metaverse like the other verse cannot be built on Ethereum. That's why they built it on Hedera Hashgraph. So my hope and my belief is that what we will see is through the next generation of blockchain apps, games, and metaverses, they're all going to be built on other blockchains. And then when we have the next 100 million people coming into crypto via these apps, they have no choice but to onboard via all these other L1 blockchains that we're going to talk about and not Ethereum. That's my prey and that's my hope. Yeah. So I think what's happened with Ethereum is, one, I'm done with it forever. <laughs> <laughs> I am so jaded right now yeah, yeah. by Ethereum and the inside scams that have been happening. Uh, but two, it highlights the need for uh, layer twos. You know, for example, why are we not using more Matic? Why are these developers not building? And because, so for example, Matic is a side chain to ETH. It uses a two-way bridge to connect to ETH. It, ha- it receives the exact same security and interoperability that ETH has but provides way lower gas fees, faster transactions, and higher throughput. And Polygon also allows developers to build, deploy, and scale dApps on Polygon using Ethereum tooling. So why are we not just using Polygon? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the <laughs> Ethereum DAO conspiracy cartel. <laughs> and also people are lazy. Here's, the, here's another thing. Arbitrum. All the top dApps are compatible with Arbitrum, Aave, Curve, Uniswap, etc. ETH developers can launch dApps on Arbitrum using unmodified EVM smart contracts. They get the security of ETH and the speed of lower fees of Arbitrum. Why are we not using Arbitrum? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Arbitrum's a little shady as well, right? With the whole thing. So yeah, like, but I'm just saying from a, yeah. why are people not just deploying more of these smart contracts on Arbitrum? I am a yeah. sh- I'm aware of its shady, yeah, shadiness yeah, yeah. as well, but. It's, it, but I, it goes back to the point that you made earlier in the episode. It's that people are just too lazy and don't know how to use Arbitrum because there's three extra clicks in their wallet. Yeah. There are, oh, my MetaMask, I downloaded MetaMask, it's it's Ethereum. Well, I guess I'll use Ethereum then. Exactly. MetaMask involved as well. Fuck. They're so all involved. There's, um, I was looking at, you know, how much gas we're paying and, you know, we were doing some swaps on uh, Pancake Swap the other day. I've had the same amount of BNB in that wallet yeah. for three years <laughs> and I've made millions of swaps Yeah, and it's still sitting in the exact... You, know, you just swap a cost like 80 cents or something. Yeah. It's great. I yeah. love it. Like it's, It really feels good. What happened to the meme coin season on, on Binance Smart Chain? I know. Well, now it's all ETH because that's where all the money is. That's that's it. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I think that this whole thing is coordinated. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's exit liquidity. Just everything's exit liquidity. All right. So let's talk about um, some competitors that maybe we like that yeah. will hopefully take ETH out of the number one seat in the long run. So, you know, if you if you're following our channel... These names are going to be very familiar to you because we talk about them all the time. We've done a truth about all these names. We've talked about them in our drafts. We picked them on our teams. So let's first, first we can quickly talk about Hedera Hashgraph. For sure. Because as we said, Otherverse, which we think will be the one metaverse to rule them all, is building on Hedera. And they're doing that because it's fast. It's scalable. Gas fees are next to nothing, 0.0001 per trade. This is a blockchain that can actually hosts a large-scale consumer-facing app with millions or billions of users, Hedera Hashgraph. That's why Otherverse is using it. So we like HBAR as one of those L1s that could potentially dethrone Ethereum. Absolutely, 100%. Yep. Uh, another one would be Coinos, free to use, zero-fee crypto. Yep. Mainnet is live. You know, we've talked about that one in the past. Um, I, don't, they're only, I think they're only available on Mexi, so it doesn't see it to like a ton of price action. Yep. Uh, but that's another really good one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you could something like Avalanche you could look at too. Yep. I was on Trader Joe the other day making a couple swaps and it, pretty sure it cost me nothing. I thought yeah. it was like $0. Zero. zero dollars, right? Zero, yeah. Point zero zero one or whatever. Here's another thing. So that's a proof of stake consensus mechanism like ETH. Um, developers can deploy Solidity smart contracts on Avalanche, making it a suitable platform for Ethereum developers. Yeah. Why are we not using Avalanche? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, another L1 that we've kind of started talking about a lot lately as we learn more about it is ICP. So Internet Computer Protocol. 
you know, this thing has the potential for almost unlimited scalability in terms of transaction speed with ne- virtually zero gas fees. Yeah. So when you look at a blockchain, I think the technology behind ICP may be more impressive than any other blockchain when you really go down to it. It's, it's, the most, it's one of the most unique blockchains in the way that it's built. These guys have a team of like 270 people. There's PhDs. They got a big Definity Foundation behind it. I think what you're going to see is a lot of these mass scalable apps they're going to be building on ICP once people warm up to the fact of how great the technology is. So ICP has a reverse gas model. So users don't pay gas. Exactly. Why are we not using ICP? Exactly. <laughs> I, just, I just can't keep like, I want to use every other platform there is ex- except for Ethereum. So yeah. uh, with ICP, a bit of technicality here, but I want, to, I want to make sure I get it right. So I'll read it. So a browser is all you need to interact with smart contracts on internet computer. Beautiful. Everybody knows browsers. Developers pay for the gas. End users access to dApps without tokens. That's beautiful. So you don't have to hold the token like we have to hold Ethereum or MetaMask to make swaps, right? Yep. Uh, so this is how they explained it. Tr- traditionally, when end users interact with a blockchain, they must have a wallet set up with tokens to pay gas fees, as I just mentioned. For every on-chain inter- interaction, even interactions as simple as liking a post. So most blockchains get around this by hosting their data on front ends on centralized clouds. Without compromising decentralization, the internet computer removes this expensive barrier to entry by allowing end users to seamlessly interact with dApps on the blockchain gas-free. This gas-free model also gives developers the flexibility to implement their own tokenomics models aimed at mass adoption. So what internet computer is doing is revolutionary. Yeah, for sure. And I also had a look at how much it costs to store uh, just on the topic of ICP here. How much it costs to store on-chain data? So $1, what it gets you? Ethereum, it gets you 44 bytes. That's it. That's nothing. On ICP, you get 215 million bytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's, that's exactly what I was talking about. It's like, when you compare the technology side by side, Ethereum to all these other next-gen layer ones that are building right now, there is no comparison. <laughs> it's like, one is a pile of shit. Yeah. And all these other things are these great, amazing new technologies that people are just not using yet. What's it going to take? Hopefully, you know, back to my rant earlier about what I think will, it will take to onboard all these users from Ethereum to all these other L1s. I think it's these consumer-facing dApps that, you know, if you want to use the next greatest decentralized social network and it's on ICP, you start using ICP. Yeah. If this amazing game that you want to use comes out on Near protocol, you use near protocol, right? You have no choice but to download the near wallet and onboard it. Yeah. It's humans need incentives to do things. And so it's going to take one of these killer apps or dApps. You know, NFTs onboarded millions to Ethereum. Yeah. It, it needs something like that where it's like you're forced to download the ICP wallet. You're forced to download the near protocol wallet or the or hash pack, HBAR wallet. You have to do it because you want to play the game with your friends. Yeah. Or you want to join the other verse metaverse. So you have to download and get into Hedera. Like you just, it has, it's going to take one of these killer things, killer apps, killer dApps to get people off of Ethereum and finally put it in its tombstone. If you're, <laughs> if, you're, well, if you're listening on Spotify, there's a picture of Ethereum in a tombstone behind me. And that's where I want to see it after wasting all my money on Ethereum gas fees over the last month. Yeah. I mean, there's also Kadata as well, which has uh, the gas station model yeah. available as well. So users also don't have to pay any um gas yeah and and the great thing about Kadena, and i think you know we've kind of started to realize more about it lately is it still has that proof of work backing exactly and connections to things like jp morgan and regulations i think as you start to see those things start to trend but people maybe want the security of proof of work with the scalability of all these next gen blockchains and the gas stations Kadena could be sitting in a good spot as well yeah absolutely so these are some some really good alternatives to ethereum i i know amazon is making I think it, yeah, it's Amazon. Amazon is making an announcement regarding Web3 gaming in June, I think it is. So I don't know if they're creating their own layer, um, their own network, or if they're going to be utilizing one of these other layer ones. Right. That is an announcement I'd be looking for, and that could be the catalyst that onboards um, the millions of users that we're talking about, getting people off of this shitty Ethereum platform. Yeah. For sure. I mean, look, you know, people in the comments are going to say, you know, Ethereum is never going to go to zero, blah, blah, blah. I know Ethereum is not going to go to zero. You know, you just have to look at all of these OG dead crypto coins in the top 50 that are from the original, you know, 2013, 2017, some Bitcoin cash, Litecoin, all these coins that literally do nothing, but they still have market caps in the billions because it's OG dead money, right? It's just people's wallets that are just sitting there. 
So my hope is that Ethereum eventually becomes that. One of those OG dead coins, you know, for in 2030 or 2040, Ethereum is still in the top 100, surely, because it's got all this old dead money in it. Yeah. But my hope is that all these other next-gen L1s that are just so much more suited for mass adoption and scalability pass Ethereum. I know Ethereum is not going to go to zero. I know it's never going to die. But I want to see it get passed by all these L1s that are just so... The technology is just so more advanced. Or we're just going to see uh, when regulations be, are put into place... And institutional money can come in. They go, oh, Ethereum. I know Ethereum. Exactly. Let's go put money into Ethereum. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. It's like instead of actually looking at the tech and realizing there's way better projects. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate. That's human nature to just buy what you know. And that's why the first mover advantage is so important, not only in crypto, but any industry, right? Yeah. A first mover advantage is, is worth its weight in gold. So... Yeah, I mean, look, I think it was it's a perfect time to get this episode out because I think a lot of people that are watching this episode have probably lost a lot of money in Ethereum gas fees over the last month trading absolute shit coins. So yeah. I, I, we want to put an end to it. You know, we're just hoping that these L1s, you know, eventually get that killer app that they need to onboard millions and can put tombs, uh, Ethereum in its tombstone. Yeah, hey, hope you guys like this episode. Make sure you guys tune to the next episode. That one is going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Beanpod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Beanpod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.